Hi, I'm Jilly Bean Fitzhenry. Welcome to another one of my acrylic painting tutorials. Today I'm going to show you the bunny egg gnome and how I painted it. I also wanted to share with you some of the other gnome designs that are available on my website. And these are available as pattern packets. So you get the instructions, the pattern, and colored photos to paint uh, by yourself. Um, the Be Grateful Gnome is available also as a tutorial on my YouTube channel, so check that one out as well. And otherwise, just sit back, relax, and let me take you through my painting process. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to prepare the canvas. Now I'm working on a 10 by 20 canvas that I just got at the local uh, arts and crafts store. Um, you can also find them online, I'm sure. Just, you know, do a search. Uh, I have um, a frameless one so that I can choose whether I want to frame it or not. Sometimes it's kind of nice to, you know, have the frameless and I'll just go ahead and continue colors around the outer edge of the canvas. Uh, to start with, I'm going to go ahead and put some gesso on the canvas. Um, I like to use the um, DecoArt Chalky Gesso and it comes in a few different colors, so you can pick a color that's closer to what you're painting on. Uh, I'm just going to use the white on mine today. And I've poured uh, some of it into a cup just to make it a little easier for base coating. So what I want to do is decide on what brush it is that I want to use. And these are all really great brushes to use. Now, when I'm working on a canvas, I normally will choose the Bristle Palmer or the Blue Ice. If I'm working on a wood piece, I like the Synthetic Palmers. Uh, so I'm going to actually show you the Oval Palmer in the Bristle today. So let's get these out of the way. Um, now I'm going to be using a 2 inch, but you certainly can get them also in a 1 inch size. Okay, um, I'm not going to wet it. I'm going to use it dry just as it is and I will dip the brush right in to that chalky gesso. Now this is very thick and I put it on generously. Now the thing that I like about the Palmer Bristle um, or the Blue Ice because they're both going to be uh, the same for putting on the canvas is that it really helps get down into those little crevices. So it cuts down on the time of having to prepare it. And I just want a nice thick coat on here so I can apply it generously in different directions and then come back and just smooth out the paint itself or the gesso. So. Now that my board is prepped, or my canvas is prepped, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stencil a border on the top and the bottom of the canvas. I have it uh, sideways right now just because it can see better in the camera. Um, so I have a stencil that is a three-quarter inch square uh, plaid. And this is available from me. It's a Jelly Bean stencil, plaid stencil. And... I only want to use three of the rows. So what I've done is I've put tape on the rows that I don't want to get into with my paint. The next thing I do is I want to measure my canvas here. And this is 10 inches this way. So the halfway would be a five. To put a little pencil mark there. Now the... Um, squares there is eight across so at the four is where I'm going to put this stencil to start with I want to see a little edge of the top of the canvas that'll make it look like it's outlined a little bit so I'm going to tape this down onto the canvas uh, if I were to have started right on the edge I might get 
you know, nice square on this side, but then the opposite side, it might only be a half a square. And to me, it looks a little funny if they're not the same. So this way, if it's a part of a square on both sides, I kind of like that better. So, okay, so let's get that down. The next thing is the brush that I'm going to use. Um, and I have the Dynasty Stencil Pro and a half inch, a five eighths inch, one of those two sizes would be perfect. What's nice about this is the bristles are synthetic and so they stick together better than a natural hair. Natural hair, they splay out and they get underneath your stencil and create a mess. Um, I'm also going to show you how to um, use the paint and the stencil so that uh, you get a little bit nicer um, effect. Now I'm going to use um, the DecoArt Purple Petal. For this so I'm going to get a paper towel handy and I've got my Dynasty Stencil Pro. I'm going to completely load the brush. Let's get that in the camera better. Completely load the brush with the color, but then I'm going to pinch it all off in a paper towel. I want it to be dry. Okay, so when I go to do, in fact, let's turn this around this way. When I go to do my canvas, I don't want to push down, I don't want to pounce, I want to go in a very gentle circle. And just a light, light touch. And remember, I um, just still just have the gesso on here. And because it was white, I didn't feel the need to rebase coat it with white again. So let's take a little peek here. But see how nice that is? Gives you nice sharp lines. But you have to um, have the brush dry. And a little goes a long way. And I kind of go different directions. So circle, you know, this way and that way. And I want a nice, nice soft look. And you can peek. Sometimes it looks like you don't have anything coming off and you really do. So you can always take a little peek to see, see what you got. Now, I feel like I'm having to push harder because I, I know that I'm got less paint on the brush now. I just want to make sure that I don't push too hard so that it goes underneath my stencil lines. And if you use it too wet, it'll definitely go under and you won't get sharp lines. So if you've ever had trouble with stenciling, that's a big part of it is the paint is too wet. You have to use it dry. But see, I, with that one load, I was able to get all the way across. And I can take a look. I have it taped down, so if I need to move it, I can. All right, so now I'm going to lift that up. And I want to match uh, my pattern here so that I can keep going off the edge of my canvas. So get that on there. And let's see if I have enough. Yeah, it's a little dry, so let me get some more on. And wipe it off, pinch it off on my paper towel. Light, light touch, especially when you first load it. And I want to get all the way to the edge here. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And take a look, and there we go. And there's my, my border. So I'm going to do lavender on the top, and I am going to do pink on the bottom. Now when I go to do the pink, I want to switch to another brush. Once I wet this brush, I'm going to um, not be able to use it till it's dry again, because you have to use your paint dry. And if you get this wet, you're going to have water coming down on the bristles. So I really recommend that you get two brushes. Um, and maybe get two different sizes, just so that you have 
you know, a variety of sizes. So I will repeat the same process. Find the halfway point, put my stencil on, and I am going to do um, cotton candy for the bottom half. So here is my pink stencil all done. Now the two brushes, until I have a chance to really clean them well in soap and water, I'm going to set them in a little cup of water and then uh, take them to my sink and clean them really well because I don't want the paint to dry in there. I want to keep that clean. Um, as far as cleaning your stencil, um, I can pull this tape off now. And as far as cleaning your stencil, uh, you want to make sure that you lay it flat and you can use um, some soap and water also um, to clean this well. Uh, now, I've used um, all kinds of different detergents to clean. The thing you want to be careful about is really scrubbing because you're going to damage your piece. So let it soak. Uh, if you have like a flat cake pan, you know, let it soak in there and then, you know, add some dish soap or a lot of people like to use Awesome that you can get from the dollar store. Put that on and just gently use your finger you know, to uh, scrub. Um, the other thing you could do is you could even use your stencil. Uh, to just gently scrub uh, to get that excess paint off. So I'll uh, clean those well afterwards also. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rest of the background. I want to do an egg shape behind the little Easter gnome and around that I want to do like a either a blue or turquoisey color. So let's take some tape. Now I like to use the um, Scotch Magic Tape only because I can see through it. And I'm going to put that, now make sure that this plaid is really dry, but I'm going to put that over the plaid so I don't mess into it. And I want to see a little tiny piece of white uh, above, and then I'm going to put that down tight here. And I'll do that on both sides of my canvas so that I really don't want to get into my nice plaid and get that lined up here. Okay. Now, sometimes it's good to take um, like a little, you know, credit card or, or something to really seal that down uh, so that you don't get any paint seeping under that. Um, and since I don't have that handy, I'm going to use my metal ruler and just carefully make sure that I've sealed that tape. Really get that pulled on there. There we go. All right. Um, I want a soft yellow, I think, behind. Um, for the egg part. Now I've got summer squash and, and now I want to use a large um, one inch brush and I just happen to have my faux sable one handy here and that is a really nice soft bristles on it so let's use that. And I'm going to just fill in that egg. So I want a nice good coverage. And if I start in the middle, I'm not going to get the ridges on the other on the outer edge of the egg as easily. So when you first load your brush, start in the middle. Then when you have less on your brush, then go to the edge. Otherwise, you end up getting great big fat ridges. There. So get it in, but then come back and smooth it all out. Uh, another thing you could do is you can take the chisel edge and use that to just kind of outline or cut into that edge and then pull the paint in. Just take your time, though. Don't be in too much of a rush. You want to do a good job. I'm going to use Green Lagoon. 
I'm going to use that for my color around the egg. So I've got my Green Lagoon. And just pick your favorite colors. You know, you can certainly, anything close is going to work. Get that on my brush. And there again. Now I've got my tape on here on the bottom, so that'll help protect. So it looks like I'm going on to my plaid a little bit, but I'm actually just going on the tape. Now this color I can definitely see. I'll need a couple coats. I just want to get it worked in and then I'll come back and smooth out my brush marks. So get it in and then you're going to go all the way across. Make sure there's no marks in the middle. And when I do close to the egg, there again, I'm going to just use the chisel of the brush to cut in close to that egg. And if I have to, I can always do, you know, like a liner brush and do some touch-ups. Now, see how when I push down, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got a little brush mark. So try to do a little bit lighter touch when you're putting this on. You'll have less brush marks if you have a lighter touch. Now the first coat you're going to have brush marks. There's just no way around it. The second coat should fill in nice. And just chisel edge next to that egg. Second coat always goes a lot faster. So I will go ahead and do that and we'll come back and take a look. Okay, now I'm looking at my yellow and it's still a little bolder than what I think I want on the piece. So I am going to take some white and do a wash over it. Now I don't mind um, if it's, if it's uh, kind of a mottled look rather than uh, a, you know, solid coverage. So I'm going to just give this a try. I'm going to add some water into it this time, probably half. So it's more like a wash. Let's give this a shot. I'm going to pull from the bottom up. And I don't need it to be a solid coverage. I just want to have a little bit of a wash. Okay, now in the background, I'm going to use my rose stencil. Um, there again, this is a jelly bean stencil. And it's a 6x6 six six, uh, with roses on it. And I'm going to get uh, I'm going to get a stencil brush again, uh, Dynasty Pro. Um, this time I'm just going to use the uh, half inch. Uh, I haven't gotten my other ones cleaned, or I could have used those. So if I would have cleaned those and let them dry, I would have been good. I haven't taken the tape off yet of my tape that goes over the plaid, okay, because I want to get this stencil on here first. Now I want to have these roses all over um, the Green Lagoon area, but I don't want it to be such a bold color, so I'm going to actually mix the white and the Green Lagoon together, and I think half and half is probably going to be a good recipe. Let me just test it here. I just want them to be very soft. So just a pale version of my background color. And I think that's going to be good. Yeah, half and half. I, and whenever I mix colors, a lot of times I try half and half first because that's always an easy recipe to remember. So let's get... My brush loaded again. I'm going to get some tape also to tape down the stencils so that I don't 
wiggle so much. Okay. Um, and I think, now it's up to you. Do you want your design to stay within the edge? Do you want it to be off? Um, sometimes it looks nice having, you know, the design actually go off the edge of your piece so that um, it doesn't look quite so framed. I think I'm going to do it inside this time and we'll check and see if I need to adjust for the other side. So, all right, so I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to load my brush with this turquoise color, pinch it all off. Okay, and let's test it. Light touch, very light, and let me check the color. Yep, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just, and your, you know, your roses don't have to even be solid all over. They could all vary just a little bit. I'm going to try not to get into my yellow egg if I can help it. And I want to get all these roses in here. So let's do the top. And by switching to a smaller stencil, a lot of times you're able to, you know, get closer uh, to the edge of something without going into it. The bigger, a bigger brush, I'd have a harder time, you know, getting close to that. So there we go. So we've got just a nice soft uh, border in the background there. And I'm going to move it across. And sometimes I'll be tipping it different directions just to make it fit. So let's do, because I had it coming in. Now I can do this and just not do that extra leaf. Or I could flip it. See how that is. See if that's a better way to put it in there. Nope. I, I like it going the same direction and I'm just not going to do that one leaf there, I think. Okay, so load the brush, get the extra off. I'm on a dry brush. And get all my roses. So I'm going to do this all the way around my piece. Varying color. Now when I go to pull my tape off, I want to pull it at an angle as I pull and pull carefully. Get that all off there. So you can get the other side. There again, pull at an angle. And I guess got a nice edge on there. Get the other one off as well. And now I'm ready to transfer my design. Okay, so I've given myself a little sketch here for my gnome. And you will be given a actual pattern that you can trace on with graphite paper when you buy the pattern packet. And that's available on my website. Um, but to start with, I'm, I'm still in the designing stage. So once I get it painted, that's when I create my packet. But I would use the gray graphite paper um, and then a stylus or a pencil to go ahead and trace over your pattern lines. Okay, so I am going to make, I'm going to make my hat pink. Okay, I'm going to use the Dynasty. I'm going to stick with the Faux Sable, I think. I just love the color of the handle. Uh, makes me think of Easter anyway. So I've got the half inch uh, angle brush. And this is boysenberry pink. And then this was my um, cotton candy pink right below it here. So you can see I've got uh, a light pink and a dark pink. And I'm going to go ahead and just get that hat base coated in. And I have to tell you, when I design my gnomes, 
for some reason, I always start with the nose and the, the line of the hat, and then I let it just kind of take on its characteristics from there. So we're going to want a nice coat of this boysenberry pink. I think wildberry is another pretty pink that's a dark pink. Um, you always have the option of mixing, you know, red and white to get your pink as well. So whatever you've got available to yourself. Let's get this. I want a pretty solid coverage. Okay, then I'm going to do the inside of the ears, and I'm going to go back to that lighter pink for those, and then I'll probably do some shading after with the darker pink, but the cotton candy, and fill in the inner ear. I'm going to use the faux sable brush, number six round. And this is warm beige for my skin color of the nose. Warm beige. Now, if you can't find it, you could mix it. If you take white and put a little tiny bit of burnt sienna in there, that'll make a, a good enough skin color as well. Okay, the ears on the outside, in order for me to get white fur on there, I actually do have to um, darken them a little bit. Otherwise, the white lines are not going to show up. So I'm going to take and mix some black and some white and get a gray. I don't need it to be too dark. I could just use a wash of black, but I find that people get a little too carried away so let's mix half and half and then water that down good it just needs to be a wash okay and I'm just gonna go around the ear just one coat of this wash just so I have a a base so that my fur lines are going to show up after Doesn't have to be real even because the fur is going to be sticking out away from these, so I'm not trying to get it perfect. Okay, there we go. Um, actually, as long as I've got that out, I'm going to go ahead and get the undercoat for where my beard is going to be. Same thing, I've got half black, half white, really, really water it down. And I just want to kind of fill in that beard area. So I'll go around the nose, but then the rest of the strokes afterwards are going to go in the right direction. But I want to get under the hat. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull from the nose all these little fur lines or beard lines kind of point towards that nose. So I want to make sure that my brush strokes are pulling that way. And I want a really kind of ragged edge there. But see, all the strokes, they're all going to point towards that nose. So pulling out and kind of flip the tips this way and that way you know, so that you have a variety, so that it's not all lined up like little soldiers. Kind of give them a little bit of a, a ragged edge. Just a wash of gray. Very watered down. It shouldn't take you too long for this. You can have it as long as you want. And it'll kind of take on its own characteristic. And I'm not trying to totally fill it in solid. I want to see the brush marks. OK, 
Okay, and that's probably good enough. And I'll stop there. Okay, rinse my brush. Let's see if my hat is is good enough. I actually think I'm going to have a little more control if I use this round brush this time to fill in the hat. So that's what I'm going to do. Second coat always goes faster. First coat always looks blotchy. But your second coat comes in and smooths it all out. And I have not added any water to the paint for this hat because I want a solid coverage. Let's see. You know, I think I do need one more coat on that nose. Let's do that, just to be sure. Now, I'm on a light colored background, so that helps. If you're doing this on a dark color, then you could take, it could be three coats. Dry. The brush yeah. handle is going to be um, the dark pink also. I was kind of mimicking the faux sable brush. And I'm going to make that brush that's in his hand uh, like a dagger brush. And I will show you later how to use a dagger brush uh, for doing some long continuous lines. Uh, so let's start by filling in the handle. And I still got my number six brush. And I like to follow through, even if I'm running out of paint when I'm pulling a long line. You may need to add a dab of water this time. And I'll come back the opposite way. Try to have a fairly steady hand. Now, if you, if you needed to, you could even, um, you know, put some tape on each side. But this, I think, is good enough. I'm going to go ahead and get some of the darker pink down in the bottom. Now, a lot of people use just water to go ahead and do their blending. I like to add just a touch of extender blending medium um, into my brush just so that I get a little bit, um, here it is, so I get a little bit extra blending time. So you could use the Traditions Extender Blending Medium. There is a Americana uh, blending medium. There's, and I know that there's other brands out there too that have a liquid. It'll be either called uh, Retarder or Extender. And honestly, I think they're pretty much all going to work fairly well together with this paint. So I'm going to dip my brush in the extender, wipe it off on the paper towel, blot it off. I just have extender in here instead of water. That's all it is. And it gives me a little bit more time to blend. I'm going to dip the long tip into the uh, boysenberry pink, the darker pink. Wipe off the excess on my palette. Now, uh, if you notice, I'm careful not to let this pink get all the way over to the other side. Okay, now I'm going to point that tip with a darker color in the bottom of the ear and kind of pull some of it up a little bit higher. And I'm just going to get the bottom of that ear with a little bit of shadow. Using that darker pink, same thing on the other side. Tuck that down in there and just keep pulling, or they call it walking. You're pulling away from where you've got the color. Now let's see if I tip this a little bit, see if it looks a little darker then. Fill that in just a little bit more. I want a little bit darker in that bottom. So that looks good. Yeah, I think I'll leave the other ear. I think it'll be fine. Okay. Dry. My nose is actually dry. Um, I'm going to use dried clay to shade the nose. Now, dried clay, there again, if you can't find the color, uh, you can mix it with burnt sienna and white. 
so you'll get that darker darker color. So I'm going to do that corner load again and I'm going to put the shadow uh, like a C shape on the left side on of the nose. Size. Now this is the black gold uh, fountain brush and it's like it's been splayed out at the tips. Now I'm going to get that with some water on that and I'm going to show you here. When I use this I'm going to squish it all the way down to the ferrule and spread it out so that all the bristles are spread out. Now it's exactly what they probably tell you not to do, right? But um, that way it's going to give me a better stipple. I'm going to take some of my cotton candy and let me try that. Now I'm only loading it on one side so I've just dipped one edge and then I'm going to use this to stipple. So I'm going to come up away from the um, bottom edge of the, of the hat there and I'm going to stipple right in the center here. It gets kind of a, a little lacy bit of a stipple. And if I get too carried away I can always stipple some of my background color on there. I'm going to skip a row and I'm going to come and stipple. Now as I run out of paint then I can do all the way to the edges. Okay so now I've got less paint so I'm going to come back and do all the way to the edge. So it's a little softer or it starts to fade but I'm kind of making rows going across, okay? Just want that to blend in a little bit more. And go all the way down. Now it looks like I'm running out, but I really still have enough. And this is just one load so far. I have enough to get all the way to those edges. Okay, now I'm going to stop and get a little bit more. Um, I'm going to rinse it, squish it down again, really fan that out. Okay, dip just one side, kind of dab the excess off, and come back in the middle here. In fact, let's go ahead and establish where my rows are going to be. And that's just the brush width. Okay, so then go all the way to the edge. Getting that in there. There we go. Kind of making stripes, but they're stippled stripes. All the way to the top. I could use a little bit more coming on this side. Let's take a look at that. All right. Touch more in a few areas. Get a little bit lighter touch now so it looks more lacy. Using it probably a little bit more dry now. Trying to pick up from where I actually got rid of the extra so that I don't get too much paint. So I do need a little more yet, but really just a, a dab and then really get that off. Now I want to kind of get those ears to sink in there. Sometimes you have to slow down in order for it to work better. I have a tendency to have to tell myself slow down a little bit. There. Okay, and I think I'll leave that alone. As long as I've got it on my brush, I think I am going to do pink for the undercoat on the bunny slippers. And, and then I'll come back and do white on top. So I'm not going to base these in 
I'm going to just go right on top of my turquoise background and get little puffs of pink. Now this time I actually can load the whole brush because I'm, I'm filling in so I can squish down in, load the whole brush and I'm just going to stipple fill in all the bunny. It's going to have fun little slippers. So this is the cotton candy that I'm using and the Dynasty Fountain Brush. Okay, I'll do the same thing for the other slipper. I've got one slipper facing forward and one a little bit more at a three-quarter view. And I'll be putting white on top of this, but it'll be nice to have a little bit of pink showing through, I think. This one, you can see the back of the slipper a little bit, so I'm go back and add a little bit of a heel. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use my rake brush. This is a black silver by Dynasty, and it's a quarter inch. And I do need to thin my white paint down. Let's see, let's do it right here. Okay. Now, a lot of times when I first mix, you know, and I want half paint, half water, but I've got too much on my brush, so I'm going to dab the excess off on my paper towel and then do a fresh load so that I don't have my brush too wet. And I really want to kind of fill those little tips. Now, you, when you look at your brush, you don't want to have globs. You want to be able to see those little uh, jagged edges sticking out, the little tips sticking out. Okay, now I want to just pull little fur lines in the ears and I'm kind of pulling at an angle so that they're sticking out you know one way or another and I may have to um, may have to use a little bit of gray to make the tips show up too and let's start with the white. And I want to come in and get some little fuzzies overlapping into the pink a little bit. There we go. Okay, use my finger to blot. Get a few more up at the top there. Now because I have a light color in the background. That's why I'm thinking I need a little bit of gray on the tips up there. Okay, so let me let that dry. Let me go ahead and do the other side and then we'll take a better look. So pulling at kind of a 45 degree angle. I'm not pressing down. I'm letting the brush do the work for me. Going all the way down to the bottom on each side. Now, I could pull from the inside out, too, if I needed to. So, you see which angle feels better to you. See if it's easier to pull in and out or from the outside in. Now, when I get to that ear, if I want to pull from the outside in, I have to tip my piece a little bit in order to get the right angle. And get some little fuzzy tips. But I'll pull from the inside out on this side. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got some little fuzzy ears. Now I do want a little bit of tiny gray. So I'm going to take some black and some white, mix me some gray. And I want it not too dark. But about half and half is still probably fine. Maybe a little more white this time. Get a little bit of water in there. Remember when you mix it up, sometimes you have too much on your brush, blot it on your paper towel. And go back and get some more on the tips. Now I don't want to pull all the way through this time. I just want to catch little tips maybe on the outside 
And if you're more comfortable using a liner brush to do this, you sure can. But just little fuzzy edges so that those ears are going to show up a little bit better. And if you get too carried away, come back and add some more white. But I think that'll help them to stand out a little bit better. And I think I will do another coat of white. And I'll get this in here first. Like I said, I let it just kind of talk to me as I work with it whenever I'm designing a piece. I, I try not to be too rigid to have it fully designed ahead of time. Whatever happens, happens. Little bit on this side, just barely catching the edges, just so I have little fuzzies. All right, rinse my brush and then I'll go back and get some more white. Okay, now this time I'm going to maybe not have quite as much water in the white, so I'll get a little bit more of a solid line. Take your time though. Go slow. Get one more coat. Get up on the tips. So you get little fuzzy edges, little fuzzy lines. Kind of overlap into those gray. That'll help set the gray into the background better. And I think that shows up better. Do the same on the other side. And I can always add more again, too. I never know until I get the whole piece done, you know, if I need more contrast anywhere. So just kind of be patient with it and let it be until you get more done. And you'll see if you need more of any one color. I'll leave that alone. Just light, light touch. I'm barely touching the surface. And get the other ear. Okay. There. I think I'll leave that alone. Okay. Okay, now let's see. What do we got next? I've got to uh, decide. Well, why don't I go ahead and get another coat on that brush? Well, i am got my pink out here. And as it dries, you, you'll need to put a little touch of water in it. So I've got my number six round brush. Just pull right on down, fill that brush in one more time. Okay, now for the ferrule of the brush, and this is what a ferrule is, it's the metal part, uh, that needs to be gray. So mix some black and some white. There again, about half and half is good. And I'll go ahead and fill that part in as well. Get that in there. And if you need to switch to a smaller brush, you sure can. Or if you want to use your liner brush or script brush to go ahead and outline the edges, if that feels more comfortable there again, you sure can. Okay, now the... Um, the bristles in the brush, if you look, they're whoops, kind of golden color, and then they'll have some deeper tips on them afterwards. So um, since I'm just kind of sticking with the same colors that I had here, let's see, I started out with that summer squash. Now you could definitely use like, um, oh gosh, what is there? Maybe 
go um, uh, like a yellow oxide or a, in fact let me just grab a little yellow oxide here let's take a look at that color that might be a good color actually that's a good color uh, so any kind of a gold color would be good let's fill it in with that otherwise I could have mixed some burnt sienna into that one I'm going to have this in the shape of a dagger so to start with I just fill it in and then I'll add little lines for the bristles after now a dagger what that does is um, it's really great for pulling long extended lines you've got um, it looks like a knife you know, so when you're using this, you'll be able to just pull a long, continuous line for striping. I think I want to make this just a little taller in the, where the bristles are. And we'll just let that dry. Okay. The... Let's see, we've got him, I've got him, he's got some long legs down here, and i got to decide on a color for that. I'm thinking lavender. So I used purple petal up on the top for the um, plaid. So let's go ahead and use that same color. It's kind of a light lavender to do his legs, and he's just got skinny kind of stripes for a leg. Long little dangly legs. I'm just going to fill that in. Now when it comes to where it touches the beard, I want to kind of pull little ragged brush marks so that when I do my beard it's going to blend in. If I do a solid, solid stopping point, it's going to be harder to cover that ridge. So if I leave little brush marks going into the beard, I'll have a much nicer transition. Get that filled in. It's maybe hard to see, but I've got little bunny ears that I'm trying to avoid down here. Bunny ears for the slippers. Just want to get those these leg this leg color in before I do the beard. Okay, then I also have uh, some arms coming out, and I've got to decide what color I want those as well. So I think, and, and I'm going to have some Easter eggs in different colors. So I want to kind of use colors that I'm going to use throughout. Let's see, I'm going to try Shoreline. That's a really pretty blue. It's just kind of a, kind of a pale blue. So there again, use, you know, use your favorite colors. Don't uh, worry about it too much. So I'm going to have them just have... I just do like mittens instead of fingers for gnomes. So I'm going to have that be the shoreline color. So I definitely want to use this for one of the eggs. Because it's such a pretty Easter. I love the Easter colors. Such beautiful colors. Okay, and I think I'll go ahead and make his arms the same color for now. I may change my mind or I may, you know, add stripes or something to them afterwards. So I'll let, there again, I, when I'm designing, I let it just kind of happen and talk to me. And I don't really know what all I want until I get further into the design. And then I can always change it if I need to kind of drag this in so I don't have a hard stopping point in the beard. I want to make a nicer transition there. Okay, so he's going to be holding an egg on this opposite side. 
And I've got to decide what color that egg is going to be up there too. And I'm thinking it might be, you know, I might do a peach color. Let's do it melon. Let's do melon. Now because I have um, a, bear, a dark color and a light color that I'm going to have to try to cover up, if I have a problem you know, covering that color, sometimes it's better to go ahead and fill it in with white first. Uh, let me, I'm going to give it a shot though. Let's see how this goes. So this is melon. It's a nice peachy color. There's all kinds of coral colors that you could use. And I think, I would, uh, actually this has a nice coverage, so I think I'm going to be good with two coats. Get that in there. Right. And that color goes pretty with that green lagoon too. I like that up against that. Pretty combination. All right. Yep. Okay, we'll leave that alone. Okay, all right, so now let me go ahead and do the beard, I think. Let's do the beard. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back to my rake, and I'm just going to use white, thin down, and it's going to take a couple of coats here because the first one I just follow through with the shapes and then the second one I create more dimension. So I'm going to be careful when I get towards the nose, light, light touch, and I want fuzzy little edges, fuzzy little tips after, and I can come back to with a liner brush to really make some more distinct tips on him. Just a light, light touch. Nice fuzzy edges at the bottom. And everything is pointing towards that nose. I'm going to tip this a little bit. I always find it easier to pull towards myself. Um, rather than flipping it away, but you may find, you know, that it's easier to flip it away from you. So you just, you know, try it both ways. But I like to pull towards myself. It's just a matter of, you know, how you control your brush and which is more com comfortable for you. So I'm, I'm not trying to get a solid coverage at this stage by any means. I still want to see some of those gray lines. Because if you make it all just solid, solid white, it'll just look flat. Get those in there. All right. So I've got his nice little fuzzy... Okay, so I am going to do the tips next. And I am going to use a little script brush. There are some people that like to use the Micron instead because they have a little bit fatter handle and it's uh, easier to control. Now, I also carry these on my website. You can get them as sets or you can get them uh, individually. Now, in this set, there is a 5 aught which has a longer line. So when you're working on bigger pieces that you need longer lines, that's good. Uh, for this piece, I would probably go ahead, in fact, let me just show you this one. I would go ahead and do the 10 odd, I think, in the Micron, okay? So let's get our white, and I'm thinning it with water. I want it to be uh, half paint, half water, so I can get skinny lines, but I don't want it transparent. I still want to be able to see 
you know, the lines. Now I like to pull the opposite, so I'm going to turn my piece all the way upside down. And I like to pull from the tips towards the top, okay? Because I want the tips to be a little bit uh, fatter, a little bit more solid tip, and you can get that by using your liner brush. Remember, kind of flip different directions. I reload often. I'm not pushing down, but this gives you a little bit more solid, more distinct hairs at the bottom, really stand out better. Reload a lot, and I don't want to push down. If I do, then I get a fat line instead of a thin line. And if you needed to pull from the inside out, you would just have to really make sure that you don't put any pressure down when you first set your brush down. Most people, when they first put their brush down, that's when you put the most pressure on. And then you're going to get a fatter line. So if you, uh, in fact, let me go ahead and show you that. Let me do, I'll turn it right side up. Okay, so now I had been pulling from the tip in. Now if I were trying to pull from the inside out, I'd barely be touching. Okay, but see how I've got that little bit thicker tip? I kind of like that, where if I'm pulling the opposite way, it's going to be a thinner line. But so that, it's up to you. You know, you just, see now here I've got a fatter beginning. Now I want to kind of blot that with my finger because otherwise that isn't going to look like it's um, going right into the beard as well. So I am going to go back to the upside down. Finish getting all the tips that way. Okay. And make sure you follow through in the direction that the beard flows. You know, you, you've got your uh, hair direction established and just have fun with it. You know, give them, let them have character. And it's not a Santa beard, so don't be trying to make it perfect, perfect. This is a little gnome, and he's just happy painting Easter eggs. Okay, and I can always come back and add more if I need to. Okay, so one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I want to get some more white in the centers. Now this has dried. Uh, if I would have tried to do this right away, it would have flattened everything out. So now I'm going to go back to my white that's thinned with a little bit of water and my rake. And I want to get some solid areas in the center, but not at the nose. So I'm staying right in the center area of the beard. I'm not going all the way to the tips. I just want to get a little bit more white in the very middle of the beard itself. If I get too carried away, I can always come back, get some gray in there, break it up again. All right, so I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, while it's upside down, I want to get a little bit more shadow under his hat and around his nose. And because um, that was gray underneath, I'll, I'll stick with the same color. Uh, sometimes I'll use, you know, a brown or a burnt umber or something, but um, paints gray is another nice color because it's nice and transparent. Okay, now I'm going to use um, a little bit of extender blending medium in my angle brush. However, um, you can actually mix half water and half extender. In fact, let me go ahead and show you that. I'm going to put some extender. Here's a little drop of extender on my palette, and then I'm going to get some water. Mix that together. Okay. That way it won't be, it'll dry faster. It won't be quite so wet. 
And then I want to make sure that I, you know, kind of blot that on my paper towel. Okay, so now I'm just going to corner load. Um, and because I don't have it mixed, I'm just going to brush mix. I want a dark gray. So just some black and some white. And I just use the tip of the brush. So I'm just brush mixing. Now I'm not allowing that gray to get to the short end of the brush. It's staying on that long tip. Okay. Get the extra off. And I want to get it a little bit darker around the nose. Just kind of tuck that in and pull some carefully out under the hat each way. So a little darker right by the nose and I can go a little bit under but not not a lot. Just enough to kind of tone down that white where it touches the nose. And just thin. It's like you um, get thinner as you come out towards the edge of the hat. Okay, now, if it looks too blocky, take your chisel edge of your brush and draw a little bit of that gray down in, away from the nose, so that it doesn't look quite so solid up there. You could always come back and add more white if you needed to as well. Well, I have that. I want to kind of tuck these ears in a little bit better into the hat. So I'm going to just kind of chop this gray. I don't want to get it too much, but I want to chop that in at the base of the ears. Get that to sit down in. Chop that in. You, you get too much, you can even take your finger and just kind of blot it a little bit. You know, a lot of people like to use a little um, Q-tip or something too, but just, you know, soften it with your finger. Get that to look like it's setting into the hat just a little bit better. Alright, now I want to get a little bit more dimension on my hat. Let me take a look. Let's turn it around, take a look at this. Um, so I either need to get more highlight in the center or I need to get a little bit of shadow coming down on the outside. And I'm going to take a leap of faith and I'm going to do the shadow coming down the side. Now there is a um, couple options. Uh, the Quinacridon Violet in the Traditions or Alizarin Crimson maybe in DecoArt. Let's try, those are both transparent colors so they're really good for glazing and for shadows because you you know a lot of times you want them more transparent. So let's try Alizarin Crimson. And I'll stick with my angle brush. I'm going to, you know, use that half paint, half, or I mean half extender, half water in my brush. Blot it. Blot it just a little bit. Okay, a little corner load of the Alizarin Crimson. Okay, and I'm going to blend the excess off. Now that's a really bold color. So blend the excess off on my palette. Okay. Because I picked up probably a lot more than I really needed. All right, so let's take a look. It's a transparent color, which is great because I won't lose my details. And I'm just going to put that on the outer edge of my hat. Now, when I float color, I'm... I'm kind of patting and blending as I go as opposed to one great big long stroke. I like to get it to blend into my surface. So just kind of patting and blending as I go and then I can smooth it out. So let's take a look at that. All right, now I have to decide do I want to just do it on one side or both sides? But I think on the hat I want to do both sides. And I'm almost thinking I want to tuck just a tiny bit of this into the bottom of the ears, too. Just get a little bit more dimension down in there. Yep, I like that. A little, little bit of a lizard crimson down in the 
crevice of the ears there helps them to stand out a little more too. All right, so for the opposite side, I have to turn it around. Okay, now if your brush feels kind of dirty or funky, stop and rinse it. Clean it off. You know, be, uh, be careful that it hasn't gotten that color all the way to the other side. And then I'm loading it with that mix of extender and water. Blot it on the towel. Take, get a corner load just on the long tip. Blend that on the edges. Now all these brushes that I'm showing you today are available on my website, jillybean.net. Okay. Let's get one more. Just to make sure. Now, if you mess into your ears, go back and add, you know, a little bit more white. Um, I'm almost thinking I might want a little bit of liner brush work on my ears, too. So I'm going to go back to this Micron liner, the Tenant, And I am going to pull some little bit more distinct white lines in the ears. Not trying to cover it up solid. But I think that's going to give it just a little bit more of a finishing touch. Get nice fuzzy little ears. Some individual little white lines, titanium white or snow white. Either one. A little bit more water. If it feels like it's not coming off the brush, add a dab more water. Just I just don't want it transparent. And I always let, you know, and you can give it a little bit of wiggle, do it a little bit more of an S shape if you need when you're putting this on rather than so straight. And you'll see there again, I'm pulling towards myself. I just find it easier. And Let's take a look. Yep, see? Now look at the two ears. See what a difference that makes, adding that final touch in there, those final hairs. I think that attention to detail makes a difference. Getting the, you know, and you can have some little stray ones here and there. They don't all have to be perfectly lined up. And you decide when you feel you've got enough. Need to angle this just a little bit better so that I can get my brush in there. I think that's going to help. A little more water. Mix that in. There again, you get too carried away. You could always come back and do some gray ones. So let's take a look at. I think that's probably good enough for that. I might add some little flowers or something in his hat afterwards. I'll, there again, I just kind of let it talk to me. All right, let's do... Let's do maybe... Oh, another coat on our egg. I want to make sure that has a solid coverage. This was the melon that I'm using. Just a peachy color. And you know, if you 
Learn to mix your colors as long as you have your primaries. You can mix just about any color there is. So if you mix red and yellow, you get orange. And then if you put white into it, you get the peach or the melon. And then depending on, you know, if you add extra red or extra yellow, it'll kind of shift in color a little bit till you get what you want. Okay. Um, I'm going to go down and go ahead and get these eggs, I think, in the bottom done as well. I've got, I'm going to do, I think I'll do the um, pink, the boysenberry pink in the back. I've got three eggs and they're going to be sitting in a nest. So I've got three eggs here. I'll get the boysenberry. And there again, it'll take another coat, so I'll just let that be. I want to get one that is blue, um, and I think I'm going to do that one next to the legs, and then I'll do the lavender for the last one on the other side. And that was purple petal, I believe. This color is shoreline which is just a pale blue and then let's get the purple petal on this one over here always love decorating eggs growing up it was such a favorite time of the season I still enjoy doing it with the grandkids. All right. And those actually, those two colors covered pretty well. The pink's a little more transparent, but I'll go back and, and do that afterwards. Okay, so now for the bunny ears on the bottom, I am going to start out with that cotton candy inside the ears. I'm still just using my number six round. It's got a, a pretty good point on it, so I'm not having to switch brushes a lot. But, you know, you can always have that option to switch to a smaller brush anytime it feels awkward, but this one's working out just fine. Okay, and then I've got, I'm anxious to do those bunny slippers. I'm, I'm trying to let this just kind of come one step at a time, but those bunny, bunny slippers are just talking to me. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the gray mix, the black and the white. And this time, instead of filling in the outer part of the ear with a wash, this time I am actually going to do the little gray lines. Now they're not going to show up real great. I'm not filling it in solid. I'm just making them ragged. And then I'll be putting the white on top of that afterwards. But instead of having a nice smooth edge, this way I'll have a little bit choppier edge because of the, the uh, liner brush work, the little tiny lines. So I'm kind of going outside the edge of my little, little uh, guidelines that I penciled in here and pulling a little bit into that pink so that it overlaps. And I don't mind if a little turquoise still shows through. Or Green Lagoon. That I think that was the color I used. Okay, I'm gonna fatten up, I think, the ear over on this side a little bit on the outside. There, and I'm gonna make this one come in a little more so that they almost touch in the middle there. Okay, I'll do the other ear also, the other side. Pulling in, there again, kind of pulling them at an angle. 
you know, add a little bit of water if you need to to get this to flow off your brush nicely. I think if you haven't tried the Micron brushes, I think you will really like them. This liner is working great, and this one was the Tenot. Get the one more ear here. Now this ear, you really, it was kind of going sideways, so I'm, I'm barely going to catch a little bit on that right side. Just enough. All right. Okay, now I've got the little fuzzies in the front here. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and I'm going to um, stipple some white in there. And I kind of want to get. I'm gonna use my um, fountain brush again, the number four fountain brush. Get a little bit of that white on there. And I'm going to see, I'm going to kind of concentrate that in the middle. Very, very light touch, little stipple. And let there be a little pink shadow on the outside edges. So I don't want to get the outside so bold. I want more white in the middle and then let it start to fade to the outside. And I'll probably get even more white in the middle after, but you got to do it in stages. Don't do it, don't try to do too much too fast, or it just flattens it. So the edge that has the white on is always pointing towards the center of my bunny, so that when I put my brush down, the white, heaviest white, is going to be in the middle. Okay. Nice and fuzzy. All right, let's do the same to the other. I want to give that a chance to dry before I try to do too much more. So, going kind of in a circle and coming out away from it. And then when I really kind of run out of paint on the brush, that's when I'm going to add some to this little heel back there, more just on the top edge. Okay, okay. now I'm going to go back, see that's fairly dry because I'm not using a ton of paint. I'm kind of dabbing the excess off. Excess off. Okay, now I'm going to get even more white in the middle, kind of going in a circle. When I run out of paint, that's when I do the outer part, but the paint on the brush is always pointing towards the center. So I still have a little bit of a pink fuzz on the very outer edge. The same with this one. Bolder in the center. And i got to keep telling myself, slow it down a little bit. There. Um, bunny slippers, they just keep talking to me, so I gotta go back and get those done. All right, I'm going to, let's see, now we did, the, I'm gonna do basically the same as I did for the um, top uh, bunny ears. So, what we did, if you remember, we used the angle brush and a little bit of boysenberry and tucked that into the bottom of the pink areas. A little corner load. Tuck that into the bottom of the pink. Smooth that out. Same on the other ones. And I'm going to try and be a little bolder this time so that I don't have to go back and use the alizarin, uh, the alizarin crimson, but you never know. I might have to. So, won't know until I get more on here. Okay, nice and bold. 
Just kind of tap that in there. All right, the bunny has to have a little pink nose too. So let's do just the wooden end of the brush. And I'm gonna put, okay, probably right in the middle. I'm gonna put it right in the middle here. Put some little circles. Now the other one, because he's looking uh, a little bit more to the side, it's in the middle, but it's off to the right. Uh, you could make a little heart shape. You could make it a perfect circle. I'm just kind of dragging that wet paint a little bit more of a triangle. Just to give it a little bit better, better shape. And then I can do um, some black for the eyes. Just going to keep this bunny simple. Get some more black out here. And there again, just use the wooden end of your brush, dip it in the black. Start with this one first. And each time you, you do a dot, you've got to re-dip because otherwise they won't be the same size. Okay, this bunny, you've got one eye that's kind of off to the edge. This one a little bit further away there. Okay. And, of course, it's got to have whiskers after. Let's go ahead and get the whiskers in there now. Go back to my script or liner brush, and I'm going to do three whiskers. Let's pull three lines. I'm going to make the one in the center the longest, and the other two shorter. I'm not touching the nose, keeping it a little ways away. There we go. Just simple. Okay, now I've got I've got to do some on the other side here, but I've got a paint can that I'm going to add in here, so I can't do the other set of of whiskers till I get that paint can in there. Let me go back up to the bunny ears, and I'm just going to use the liner brush because they're too little for the rake. And I'm going to add the white lines. Okay, so I've got to decide what I'm going to do with those legs, and I'm almost thinking that they need little white stripes. Um, let me just check here. I think just little stripes going up is good. And then I can see if I want to shade one side of the purple after. Took another one in here. Yep. Kind of helps, kind of helps it blend into the white of the slippers, you know. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it, getting them close to the same, uh, you know, distance apart. Don't, don't get too worried about making them perfect. Oh, another thing, I could have made them polka dots instead. There, yeah, I'll leave those and then maybe come and put a shadow on one side afterwards. All right, let's see. Uh, maybe a little white dot in the bunny eye. 
just the tip of my brush, a little bit of white, put it on the upper right area. Oh, and maybe even in the nose. Let's do a little dot on the right side of the nose. There we go. Okay, uh, I'm going to do a paint can here. So I'm going to make that gray, a lot of white, and just barely a touch of black so that it's pale. And then I'm going to have, I think I'll put some... Uh, paint drips on this can too. This is his little, I'm going to try not to touch the bunny slippers and if I do that I get a little teeny hairline of an outline from the turquoise and I kind of like that. That'll help separate them better and pull across. Now I'm not worried about the paint can having more than one coat. I've used quite a bit of paint. But I'm going to have some drips coming down. And I should be okay with the one, one good coat. Let's pull on the chisel edge, get that edge, pull the color in. Get across the bottom, and I'll probably put, yeah, let's put a little handle on this too. So I'm going to put the little nubs where the handle would come out on each side. So little square nubs. Okay. All right, so then I'll just pull brush strokes across so that if I see the brush marks, at least they're going in the same direction. Okay, and we'll let that dry. Okay. Now I've got... I've got a little nest here that these eggs are sitting in. And I've got to decide what color I want. You know, I think I'm going to carry through with my... Uh, dried clay. I'm going to start with that. And and just add a little bit of water because it was sitting out there a while. So it had a little skin that came across, but underneath is nice fresh paint. Okay, now for this nest, I'm going to do little wavy, wiggly lines going around. And they, they need to kind of crisscross here and there. Tuck it in close to the bunny. So hold back on your brush a little bit so that you don't have quite so much control. So I'm holding back further on the handle. Now when I was doing real detailed um, work, I held it closer to the ferrule. This time I'm holding it further away so I have less control because I want these lines to be wiggly and wavy. I don't want them to be perfect lines. Reload often. I'm using the paint a little bit thick. I've got a little bit of water in there, but I um, want it to be a little bit more solid and I think this color is working out just fine. I want the lines to kind of overlap and then in next to the eggs I'm going to make it more solid so let the go ahead let the turquoise show through in the bottom part. But then let's get the inside top of the nest can be a little bit darker. So that I can fill in a little bit more solid. Right up next to the egg. There we go. 
Okay, probably could see a little bit of this on the other side too, so let me add some lines over there too. There again, make sure they kind of crisscross a little bit. Just kind of tuck them in, wiggle them in. Little teeny lines that touch the bunny ears so that they will overlap nicely. Okay, so that is the first step. Now I want to go with a lighter color. Um, let's go with, I want to get a little bit more of a gold in there, but this, this gold is maybe just a little bit too dark, so let's lighten it up. Get some fresh white here and make it a lighter gold. In fact, that might be a better color for my brush, too. I might go back and add that. No, I can use this for the lines in the brush. Never mind. This will be just fine. Okay, so let's test it. Let's see. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, now I want to get lines of this gold. Okay. And there again, you're going to make them wiggly, wavy. They're going to kind of crisscross. Just a little impression that you've got a, a nest here. And then I'll need one more color that's even lighter. And so I'm going to pick up more white on my dirty brush and make just a, a real pale gold. Now I'm going to try and stay a little bit more in the center and not so much on those side edges. That'll kind of help pull this front part forward a little bit more. More in the center. Just really wiggly, wavy. And I don't mind that little bit of turquoise showing through at all. Um, you know, you could even do little tendrils or something in there, but I think I'll just leave that for now. See if I want anything else in there. Now, as long as I got these colors, it's going to be the same colors up in the brush, uh, in the hairs of the brush. So let's do that. So uh, we base coated it with um, uh, yellow oxide. Uh, any kind of a gold is going to be fine. Then I added white into it to make it a lighter gold. And I'm going to use that for the little individual hairs in the brush. A little bit more water so it comes off. I'm not trying to cover up all the other color, just adding little brush hairs. All right. Then let's see, I might want just a few more, even lighter ones in there. Don't want to get too carried away. Just a few. All right, then. I want to get some darker on the tips. Remember I told you there were some darker ones up on the tip. So there again, just trying to stay with the same colors. So um, not necessarily matching the original brush, but um, I want to get the darker. So let's use the dried clay just on the top of the tips here. Get a little bit A little bit darker in the tips. All 
All right. One more here. Okay, and I'll just leave that alone. Okay, then we've got our feral, and I'm going to start with black and just kind of give me some guidelines for some lines. Um, in fact, let's go ahead, let's go across the bottom, and then I'm going to do another short one. This is where it's crimped. Okay, so see on the ferrule here, you've got uh, where it's crimped in. So I'm making, you know, a couple lines there for where the crimping is. Now the crimping is rounded on each side here, okay, and then straight coming down into the base. So let's go ahead, outline. Now here, just curve in just a hair where it's crimped. Come down here, let's curve in just a little bit where it's crimped. And I'll go across the top here too. All right, so we've got our our ferrule in there. Okay, now the ferrule um, is also pinched in just a little bit. Okay, see where it's pinched in just a little bit here. If I hold it right, you can maybe, let's see if I can get it in the right lighting, maybe see just a little bit where um, it's like pinched in right there. And so I want that to show. So I'm gonna go use my angle brush and just a, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the black. Get the extra off. Okay, and I just wanna float across a little ways away from the top edge of that ferrule where it would have been crimped. Okay, then let's go ahead and do one side only in each of the sections. You can pick a side. You know, it could be the left or it could be the right. I'm not, not paying attention to light source on this one, so whichever is better. Because if you're left-handed, it might be easier to do the other side. Okay, then the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'll do it with the white. Just to give it a little bit of shine. So corner load. Wipe the excess off, but it's a little bit more of a wash. Now I've got to turn this upside down in order to get that other side. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and do on the edge. A uh, touch more white, I think. I was a little skimpy. There we go. Got to be able to see it. And just a hair up on that top as well. All right, now um, I'm going to go ahead and do like a little line for some shine also. And I'm going to actually do it in the shadow area, I think. Little broken little dots in the crimped area. And I've got my ferrule. Okay. Then we have the handle. All right. Now, if you um, want, you uh, you can shade one side of that handle. And I'm going to actually start by outlining it first with that alizarin crimson. So I'm going to pick the same side that I shaded my um, ferrule, and I'll do a line of crimson first. And then I will go ahead while that's wet and float a little bit of crimson on there. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm not going to do a whole lot to this. A little bit of the crimson on one corner, wipe the extra off. Just come down. Now I'm still just using the same angle brush, the same half inch, but if you need to just switch to a quarter inch, um, you sure could. But I'm only loading the very, very tip. So the other half has water on it, so it should be fine. All right, and then I'm also going to add, um, there again, I think I'll add some white. 
highlight lines. Uh, let's do let's do a little dot. Do a little dot and a line. And till you run out. Okay, and just leave it. Okay, let's go back to the paint can. That is dry now. So I am only going to shade, I think, one side. I want a, uh, a darker gray. I don't want black. That's too much. So I've got to mix a darker gray color. Darker than what, what I base coated with. And it probably, half and half, probably would have been a good recipe for this. So I'm just going to come, I need a little more water there. Just going to come down. I'm not going to do that nub. I'm just going to come down, kind of go around the bunny. I'll be able to put the bunny's um, ear hair in after this. Okay, now I know this is kind of crazy, but I'm thinking I'm going to use alizarin crimson to shade the one side of that egg up here. Now I may change my mind and wipe it off, but I think if I use a pale wash, I think this will be good for the shadow on the one side. And I know the light is shining. Let me tip this. I was a little skimpy because I was a little afraid of it, so let's get a little more color. All right, so I've got crisp blue, it's called. True blue would work nice too little corner load and do off to the one side now if it's too bold stop and mix it into your original color you'll get a softer version because sometimes when you jump too far it, with your contrast I know I've got a lot of water in mine, so let me see if I can tip this so that you can see that it's the color I've got. Okay, so a little bit deeper blue. And then I've got the purple one. Let's try just regular lavender for our shading color. Remember, you can always do uh, the little trick where you've got extender and water in your brush to give you a little more blending time. Uh, right now, I'm just sticking with the water because, um, honestly, these sable brushes hold more water. And so sometimes you might find you've got to blot it a little bit more, but I've got plenty of water for blending right now. So I kind of like that. So lavender is on. Let's see if I can tip this away from the light a little bit. Maybe that way. See if you can see it. A little bit of lavender. Let's also do the legs. Let's go down one side of the legs. Go right through the stripes. And I'm only going to do the one side. right through on the left side of each leg. Okay, just leave that alone. All right, I'm going to, I think I'm also going to take some of this and I'm going to use this up in the arms. I'm going to use it right up against where the cuff is going to be to separate 
the mittens and the arm. So the color is pointing towards the mitten and fading towards the beard. And I can always touch up my little hair lines if I need to, but that'll help pull that color up a little bit higher too, so that's, that's good. All right, for the blue mittens, let's use that same darker blue color and let's put some of it on each side of the brush so that looks like he's holding it. And of course, I gotta flip it to get the other direction. And taper it a little bit into the thumb area there. So a little less. And then I wanna put some on the other side. I'm gonna put it under the egg, the mitten under the egg here. All right. Okay, leave that alone. So I've got the blues in there. Um, this one blue egg, it almost really looks like I need to pull a little across the bottom here too. Kind of finish rounding that out. And, and I'm going to just touch up my purple egg with the petal because I went into it a little bit with my, with my blue. Now if I would have caught it while it was still wet, I think this is the dry, oh no, it's still, still wet. I can just take a wet brush. There we go and just wipe that out. Okay, that was easy. Awesome. So for the paint drips, I'm going to start... Okay, I just got to decide what color I want to start closest to the bunny here. And you know, I think I might do the blue so that it kind of mirrors the other side. Okay, so... Here's the top of my paint can, and I'm going to have these little drips, making them come down, kind of push your brush down just a little bit to get a little bit more of a dot or a long, so long little tip there, kind of a rounded drip mark. And I think these are easy enough to do without trying to, uh, you know, trace on your pattern. Just going to make some. Okay, so blue, and I'm going to go, uh, next would be the lavender. That would be next on the color wheel. So I'll get some of the lavender which is purple petal, I believe. And maybe just kind of dot some into the previous color. A little bit better blend. You can decide how long you want to make these strips. Maybe I'll make this one even longer. This one shorter. Okay, then next will be the pink. Now the lighter pink might be too light, but let's try it. Because I can always add a little bit of the darker... Nope, I think it'll show up. Let's maybe go kind of somewhere in the middle of that previous strip. making them all different lengths so that they don't come out the same throughout. Maybe only do two of that color. And then next in line would be the corally color, which was melon. 
make that one longer. And somewhere in between. Okay, and then some yellow. Okay, now we had, I had this summer squash. And I might just go ahead and use that as is. But any kind of a yellow. Could have made it the gold. Okay, and I think I'll just leave that. All right, so the um, paint can, I want to get a little bit of a rim across the bottom there. And I'm going to try just doing it with a highlight first. If that doesn't work, go to plan B, right? So I want to kind of get a little separation. Like there's a little rim. So I'm just going to outline. Give it a little, little bit there. Let's put a little white on the top and then the edge of those little nubs coming out too. And I think I'll do a, a darker line on the bottom of the paint, the uh, paint can. Get a little black out here. A little skinny line there. Okay. See, I'm going to need a handle to come up for the paint can. Let me draw that on though. So I want, oh, and I just put my, put my uh, finger right in the wet paint. Let me just fix that quick. Actually, this will work out good. I'm going to make it the darker gray in between the white and that'll actually make that show up better. So half white, half black and then let me come back with my white again with my liner. There. That's better. Okay, now I can actually do a little dot and a line just for a little bit of a highlight in that rim area. Okay, then I'm going to draw a little arch here. Now I could take, you know, something to go around, but I'm just going to give it a shot. See if I can't get that. Now I probably have turned upside down to do the other side. Let's see if I can get it kind of even. All right, then you just have to decide, do you want the handle to go in front or behind your brush? Um, I, think, I think I'll just go ahead and let it go in front of the brush. Okay, maybe I want it to be the dark gray. So black and white, about half and half. And I'll use the liner. And you got to have a little bit of thickness to it. Too skinny, it's not going to look like a handle. And 
and then just curve it into your little section that was sticking out on the side of the pail. Get it just a little thicker there at the top. And I'll leave that as is. Okay, now I want those drips to show up just a little bit more, so I am going to outline one edge of each of them with the color that is the darker version. So on um, that blue, I'll use the darker blue, and I'm just going to get the one edge. And if I want, I could come back and do white on the other side, or maybe just some highlights. So let's get the darker, let's get the lavender. I think that'll help them to show up a little bit better. And then we had the pink, so we want the darker pink. That was the boysenberry. And um, this is available as a pattern packet on my website, so you'll get the instructions and color photo and um, let's and the uh, pattern and everything that you'll be able to trace on. Now, for the peach, I actually ended up using the alizarin crimson on that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to take that melon color and I'm going to darken it with the alizarin. Instead of just using the alizarin as is. Let's see how that works. It's got to be darker. Maybe I'm going to have to go with the alizarin. Yeah. It's all just a trial. Okay, and then I'm going to do that yellow oxide color, my gold, for on the yellow. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to do the center of a flower right there, and then I'm going to do little white dot flowers, and I can only get like two of them, and I have to reload. And I want to do five or six dots around. Um, if I need to go back on top, I can actually do a little bit of a rotation if I want them a little bigger. Just kind of rotate that brush a little bit, and I've got a dot flower there. Okay, and then I've got to decide on the purple one. Maybe what I'll do is a row of dots through the center. I'm just kind of making this up as I go along here, so it's just got to just see what's going to happen. Okay. Then, I'm going to get, let's see, I want to get some stripes, I think, in there, too. Let's go back to my little liner brush here. Okay. I want to get a color that's going to show up. So let's do, well, let's try the light pink. Let's see if that's going to show up. You just decorate the eggs any way that you want. You just, you know, just kind of have fun creating designs on them. All right, and then I'll do, let's see if the darker pink will show up below that. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. All right, and then on the blue egg, I think I want to add some little leaves. So I am actually going to go back to that green lagoon now. I'm going to take some of that out. That was our, our background color. And let's see, I'll use the round brush. And I'm going to see if this, and then a little swipe of some white. See if I can add some little leaves on each side. So green, a little tip of white in there. A little more white if it doesn't show up. Okay. And you can go over them a second time. Don't be afraid of it. Okay, then I'm going to do some real tiny dots. So I'm going to switch to a stylus and do some real little dots in these eggs. So I'll come to the purple one and I'll do about three and then reload. Okay, and same above the top one here. Dip it in the white. There we go. Okay, and then the blue egg, I'm going to do three dots just to kind of fill in the rest of the blue egg. But just, you know, have fun. Do uh, whatever you would like to decorate them. And maybe even just some random individual dots just to help kind of break it up a little bit more. Okay. Now for the paint drips. Let me go back to that. I'm gonna, I, I definitely want to get some little white dots and lines in here. So just pick up. Now I could have used the stylus. I'm going to get some white in the bottom of the drips, little, little dots. So see how I'm scooping up? On the tip of the brush, I scoop up. I'm not taking that off. That way I get a nice little round dot with the tip of my brush. Okay, one more there. Okay, and then now I'm going to do some lines. So now I'm going to twist it on my palette or get the extra. And I'm just going to pull some lines. It could be on the edge. It could be inside of the edge just get some white highlights coming in each of those drips. And it doesn't have to be the whole length. Just want to kind of break this up a little bit. And then we have drips. Okay, I also am going to put it's a wash of white, a skinny, skinny line right in the middle. So that's another reason why you don't want your handle to be too skinny because you wouldn't be able to get this white line in the middle of it otherwise. But it'll give it a little bit more of a shine. Get that in there. Okay. I'm going, to add, I'm going to make this line just a little longer in the middle of the bottom, too. Okay. Now, I, I almost feel like I need a little, little bit of, not white, white, but maybe almost white in the nest here, right in the front, and kind of like on the top. Just some final little 
little lines and it wouldn't even hurt if they overlapped you know the bottom of the eggs a little bit might actually set them in a little better but just a real pale pale yellow final little little highlight in the front of that nest I think that helps now I can do my bunny ears so now I can finish my bunny ear get the white I like these little bunny slippers. I think they're cute. I'm not going to have a, you know, not as wide on that other side, remember, because he's kind of looking a little bit sideways. There we go. And then just look to see if you need to touch, you know, any of the rest of the ears up a little bit. I'm on a little, little more of a point, I think, on some of this. A lot, a lot of times when you use white it kind of fades as it dries so may have to go back and do just a touch more. And you may have, you know, when you did your nest or your eggs, you may have overlapped a little bit into the ears. So here's your chance to just go ahead and touch up those edges. Kind of fun. All right. I think I'll leave those alone. All right. So now I've got a, a few things I've got to finish. I've got to get um, this egg decorated. And I have to decide if I want some little flowers up in his, across the top of his hat. And I kind of think I do. Um, I'm, I'm actually kind of thinking I want like a little rainbow of flowers or, yep, I'm going to do a rainbow of flowers. So I'm going to do white centers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the middle and work my way to each side. So I, because I don't know how big these flowers are going to be until I get them on there. So I'll start with a white center. All right, so right in the middle of my pink, I'm going to go with, I think I'll go with the blue first. So I'll get the blue dots. Now if I kind of rotate it, I can get a couple of dots off and get them closer to the same size. All right, so I've got a blue one. Then I want to do another white dot, and I think I'll do, um, I think maybe I'll do the peach or the melon. Just a little something up there. Okay, and another dot, and probably the yellow. There, all right, and then some on the other side. So now I kind of know my spacing, so I'll go ahead and do both white dots. <clears throat> now I can either choose to do a repeat and do the uh, peach and then the yellow here, or I could keep going with um, other colors as well. I, I think I'm going to do actually the background color. Green Lagoon. Okay, and then the one that will be left is the lavender I haven't used yet. And 
And that was the purple petal. All right, and give them a little bit of color up there. Okay, so I'm still letting that egg kind of talk to me, but I just had another thought as I was working here, and I think I'm going to go back to my stencil. I'm going to use... I'm going to go ahead and use my stencil here, and... I'm going to put the little, littlest buds, or the littlest flowers, overlapping um, between the egg and the background. And I'm going to make them a little bit brighter white this time. So let's give it a shot. So I'm going to load the, the stencil brush and wipe it all off on the paper towel. And a little circle. Let's see, I've got, I got that watered down, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little bit of fresh. Okay, but I really wanna wipe all that off. All right. Let's take a look. Kinda like that. Okay, now I can twist the, um, I can go ahead and twist the uh, eh, the bud so it's facing different directions, or it could have it all the same. But that'll help soften that edge where they overlap, or where they come together, where they meet. Okay, now I gotta be careful so I don't get on my handle. If I do, I could wipe it off right away, remember, while it was still wet. Okay, let's see one more spot here. Carefully just kind of sneak it in. I feel like I wanna little more. I've got one up on top here that I want to just put this back on and touch up just a little bit. All right. I think I'll leave that alone. Okay. Now that I've got more of this piece done, I've decided to go back and do a couple of little changes. Uh, on the stencil, I want a few darker squares on here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my stencil back on and the bigger squares, um, I'm using the boysenberry and just going to go right over because I wanted them a little bit more pinky. So I'm going to do these bigger squares a little dry brush of the boysenberry just to perk them up a little bit more. Okay, I think I want a boysenberry line across separating the background. So what I'm going to do is get some more boysenberry out here. I want a little, I want that dark pink line. And I'm going to thin my paint. I need it to be able to uh, come off the brush nicely. So I gotta thin that down. And I'm totally filling the entire brush. Okay. Now when I go to set this down, it's like I'm cutting. So take a look at, you know, the tips here. I'm using the tips and I'm pointing with that I'm pulling, actually, I'm pulling back towards the short end of the brush, okay? So I'm going to set that down. And I'm going to try to keep steady pressure and pull all the way back. All the way 
halfway across the bottom and I have a line. Now I may need to do one more coat but this is much easier than using a liner brush. So let me do the same thing on the bottom half here too. So I am filling it back in with the cotton candy. I want the lighter pink. I decided that that was just too much. So I'm filling it back in with the lighter pink. Okay, do I want white or pink? You know what? Let me try the cotton candy first. Kind of thinking I might want cotton candy instead of the white. All right, fill it up with cotton candy, really wipe it off. All right, now I could do, yeah, no, I'm going to stick with the small ones. Let's start with a little one up in the top. Gentle touch. And now you certainly could have done this on the other ones down below as well. Lots of options. One more over here. Now this one's going to have to kind of go off, so I'm going to try and be careful and not get into the yellow background. There we go. Okay, now my pink egg down here, because I went over it, now I want to shade the one side. I'll use the darker pink, the boysenberry, and just do the one side like I did the others and then I'll be able to decorate it. Yeah, it was just a little too dark for me. So I like this lighter color, I think, a little bit better. The other thing that I'm looking at is I want this nose to look like it's going under the hat a little bit. Now I could have decided to highlight the top and then it would be sticking up, but I want that to tuck under the hat a little bit. Um, and I know it's a color I have not taken out prior to this, but I think I'm going to go to my standby, which is Burnt Sienna. Just get a little darker under that hat. help tuck that in just a bit. So just across the top of the nose here, I want to get that a little bit darker. It was just blending into that pink a little too much for me. There. Now, since I did decide to take this color out, the other thing I'm going to do is take the Burt's Sienna and I'm going to do a little wash on the side of the nest. Just a little, little corner load and a little wash. And that's going to help um, tuck that back a little bit. A little in the top here on the other side, maybe a little next to the bunny. Just a little wash, don't get heavy, heavy paint. Just enough to tuck that in and maybe even a little bit between the eggs here. Deepen that inside little area. A little bit more. I'm going to go back and do the dots on the egg in the, the pink egg. Now, 
it can either be the white or it could be the dark pink. I'm almost, let's try the white first. And I'm gonna, and because I can see where the other ones were, I'm gonna put it right on top of where they were because when you do the dots like this, you get a little bit of thickness or dimension in the paint. And then you won't even know that I did this because it's right on the same spots. But I think that lighter egg makes a big difference. Okay, then up in my top egg here, I'm going to take my stylus and I'm just going to add some random white dots up in there as well. That'll help kind of pull it together. Okay, I think that we will call him done. My little Easter gnome.